he is not as famous as Henry Fielding, but his novels were also important during this time. His most famous novel is the last one on your screen, that is 1771, The Expedition of Humphrey Clinker. Also important is the first one, The Adventure of Roderick, Roderick. Random. And now, Santosh, your favorite writer, Henry Fielding. Fielding. Uh, Fielding, uh, he, uh, the first one which he wrote was in uh, 1741 and it is called Samuel, Samuel Andrews. Yeah. And uh, he wrote uh, both Samuel Andrews and Joseph Andrews, uh, in fact, uh, as a response to Richardson's novel called Pamela. Yeah. So uh, you can see that uh, in during that time, the f that 40 years uh, we have, we call the rise of the English novel. There is a lot of uh, you know writers talking about what should constitute the form of the novel and uh, how it should be told the story, and uh, the questions of uh, truth and representation and how a life has to be told and uh, all these. I mean, these are all you can see. These are all proper names. All the stories which are told in early uh, 18th century England uh, were, were uh, proper, proper name stories. Just novels. look at that. Look at all the... Moll Flanders, Robinson Crusoe, Tom Jones, Humphrey Clinker, Roderick Random, Pamela, Shamila, all these novels are based on the proper name or the individual. Another kind of novel which was very important in the early period is the epistolary novel. Do please write these two words down, picaresque and epistolary. Epistolary it refers to a novel written as a series of documents, usually letters. So the whole novel is composed of letters written by one person to another. Sometimes epistolary novels have uh, both the letter to a person and a letter from a person. But the most important point is that the whole novel is composed of letters alone. Santosh? In fact, uh, Samuel Richardson's Pamela uh, is written entirely in the form of, uh, in the form of letters. And um, this uh, letter writing uh, as a genre was very popular in the 18th century. So when the novelist, the first novelist, when they started writing novels, they usually uh, used this popular form uh, which was already established and which was already doing well as of uh, genre uh, and they used it to their advantage and uh, if, that's why I mean during this time particularly in the early part of the 18th century you see you know letters being used uh, in the novel uh, as if that is the form that novel is to take so uh, so the epistolary form has something to do with uh, the the genre which was already established in uh, the early part of the 18th century and yeah. that is the essay and the letter and the prose uh, Narrat uh, narratives that were in place already apart from these writers we have the eccentric genius Lawrence Stern Lawrence Stern has basically written only one important novel and that is The Life and Opinions of Tristram Shandy, Gentleman. And this novel he wrote in three volumes in 1759. What is important about Tristram Shandy is that it does not, it does not only tell us about the life of Tristram Shandy, but it tells us about a whole range of other things. It does not give us the story in a line or a linear narrative. Rather, it goes all over the place, telling us sometimes about the village and sometimes about Tristram Shandy's thoughts. Tristram Shandy is supposed to have influenced the postmodern novel of today. So, 
Now we move to a very important part of today's lecture and at this point uh, student friends I strongly suggest that you should have a paper and a pen handy because this is something which will help you to understand the novel form in a better way and what we are going to talk to you about now is about the characteristics of the early novel. If you look at your slide you see the first one way of characterizing the early English novel is the rejection of traditional plots. No more stories from the medieval romances. No more stories from mythology or the Bible. But we have new contemporary stories and plots. The second characteristic is that authors were deeply self-conscious. They knew they were writing something new. They were self-conscious about the fact that they were writing a new type of work and they uh, insisted on their own originality. That's why you traced uh, Tristram Sandy back to, I mean, uh, traced it uh, to the development of uh, the modern, uh, postmodern novel. In fact, uh, Tristram Sandy is a novel which talks about novel writing. So, it is it is a very self-conscious uh, mode of writing. And it was there in Tristram Sandy yeah. back in Lawrence. And uh, also, uh, the example we gave you earlier, uh, our man Henry Fielding, wrote a novel, Shamila, as a response to Samuel Richardson's Pamela. So you can see that there's a lot of dialogue which is happening about the novel during this time. The next characteristic of the English novel is particularity. That means it gives Careful characterization and presentation of the background. The background is not vague, but it is clear. The next characteristic is emphasis of character and consciousness of time. Let me repeat that. Emphasis of character and consciousness of time. Novels are very careful about the passage of time. They are also careful about the development of character in each of these novels. For the first time, memory begins to play a role in literary writing. The next characteristic, the fifth characteristic is specificity in setting. Let me repeat that, specificity in setting. That means the place and time are known and fixed. The locations are exact. They belong to specific villages, specific towns and in a recognizable past. And ultimately, the whole novel gives a feeling of complete authenticity. When we read a novel of the 18th century, we feel as if we were in 18th century England because of the realism with which the novels were written. But these, this is not the only way to characterize the early English novel. Uh, Santosh, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about another way of 
uh, characterizing these novels. Yeah. So uh, another important characteristic of uh, the English novel is uh, uh, its com contemporaneity. It uh, novel novels, as you know, are stories uh, of uh, now. Yeah. And uh, it, they tell us uh, about events uh, in a in a relevant past, in a uh, past which is very recent, and maybe uh, like I mean. Uh, 10 years, 10 years or, or 15, 15 years, years. but some, not something which is 100 years or 1000 years away. It is so contemporaneity is a very important feature of the early English novel. And uh, another characteristic uh, is uh, its believability. Whatever is presented, I mean, uh, it feels as if these people, they really exist. And uh, the novels are, uh, I mean, people are recognizable and they are behaving and uh, in a uh, very human way. And uh, you can believe in them yes. as if they, they, whatever they are doing, their actions are in fact believable. I mean, that is one important aspect of, uh, of novel. And the other one is uh, familiarity. And they deal with uh, novels, uh, usually they deal with uh, everyday existence and uh, they deal with the lives of uh, common people. That was, that was a major characteristic of and the English this is novel. where the novel moves away from the earlier prose narratives and, and the romance. Uh, romance. Yes. So the believability, the contemporaneity and familiarity of the setting, of the time, of the characters were important features of, of the, the 18th century English novel. novel. And, and uh, as we go on, we can see that individualism and subjectivity were very important features. The crucial difference between romance and novel was that the characters in novels were very conscious of themselves as persons, whereas the characters in romances only had a role to play. So there is a big difference in the characters of romances and the characters of novels. That is, self-consciousness is something very important in the novel. If you look at your screen, you will see object of identification. That is, the readers of the novel felt because the novels were written so believably, readers felt that I can feel what the heroine is feeling or I can feel what the hero feels. It is, we don't feel that they are far away and separate from us. We feel that the characters are like us and we can feel their feelings. So there was a great closeness between readers and characters. And don't forget, these readers, who, are, who were these readers? These readers were, I mean, uh, from the middle class. So the middle class life was the stuff of the novel. And that's why this, the, usually the middle class uh, was able to identify itself. With, with the middle the class characters. setting, the middle class characters and life in middle class England. Household. Another point which characterizes the early English novel is coherence and unity of design. Let me repeat that. Coherence and unity of design design. That is, there is a sense that the novel is constructed into a systematic whole. The novel did not feel as if yaha ek tukda hai, vaha ek tukda hai, but it felt as if it was one consistent pattern. We felt that there is a pattern in the novel and that is something which is very special about the early English novel. 
and finally it also has elements of fragmentation since the novel form was long not a few pages but hundreds of pages the author had the freedom to comment on other things and not just tell the story so the freedom to digress was also a very important characteristic and the aspect of inclusivity that's also an important aspect of uh, the novel can you because, explain that because uh, although this uh, Uh, novels were based on middle class life mm. there were so much to offer uh, on offer for the uh, low classes mm. to identify themselves uh, with the uh, characters so the, and uh, uh, we shouldn't forget that uh, in fact the first i mean the pamela is a story uh, it tells the story of a servant girl and uh, um so uh, you can see uh, a, a, a servant being the heroine of the of a novel so yeah. the 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 low class was also was kind of identifying itself with the These. characters portrayed in uh, actually a middle class setting or middle class uh, i house. see i feel it so what you mean by inclusivity means including the upper classes the middle classes and the lower classes in the setting story and characters of the novels i so that is why i understand that novels were was a dynamic and a thrilling form in the 18th century now as we come to the close of our essay we would like to talk about two slightly difficult concepts but which is very important for you to understand if you have to understand the novel not just in the 18th century but also